1954, <clears throat> a small book by Charles G. Dubois entitled Kick the Dead Lion, a case book of the Custer Battle appeared. Some 75 years after the Battle of the Little Bighorn, pro-Custer partisans continued to lob incendiary charges at Marcus Reno and Frederick Benteen, Custer's subordinate officers, while anti-Custer partisans lobbed incendiary charges at George Armstrong Custer. This book repeats the standard pro-Custer line in a venomous and emotionally charged voice. Reno was a coward, a drunkard, and a man of low character, whose cowardice led to the Custer disaster. Benteen was a jealous, peevish, and insubordinate officer. His failure to obey Custer's orders was criminally negligent. There would be little of interest in this book, except that, for the first time, Dubois challenges the underlying evidence upon which anti-Custer historians, such as Frederick Vanderwater, E.A. Brinnenstuhl, and Fred Dustin relied, namely the testimony of the first-hand witnesses. Dubois challenges the motivations of the witnesses, and he says, much of the testimony taken at the Reno Court of Inquiry was not, as tradition demands, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, especially is this true of statements made under oath by Captain Frederick W. Benteen, Major Marcus Reno, and a select group of subordinate officers who felt some inexplicable obligation either to actually change their testimony or to phrase it in such a manner as to cast a different implication on Reno's various actions. So says Dubois. Goes on, Dubois goes on to take issue with the so-called enlisted men's petition, which lauded the actions of Reno and Ventine, and called for their immediate promotion. Cited so tellingly by anti-Custer historians in vindication of Reno and Benteen. Now, according to Dubois, the former superintendent of the then Custer Battlefield National Monument, one Major Edward S. Luce, submitted the signatures on the petition together with a photostatic copy of a payroll log of the 7th Cavalry to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, for a comparison of handwriting. In November 1954, the FBI concluded that in the case of 79 of the 236 signatures on the petition, and I quote, variations were noted which suggest in all probability that the signatures on the petition are forgeries. Dubois makes the case that Reno and Benteen conspired to introduce phony evidence into the record almost immediately after the battle. On July the 4th, 1876, only nine days after the battle, Reno and Benteen concocted the enlisted men's petition. Dubois says only an enormous sense of guilt would compel Reno and Benteen to attempt to prearrange the evidence in advance of any possible inquiry, and a complete vindication by the enlisted men would weigh heavily in any decision that might be made later. According to Dubois, it was probably Ben Teen's first sergeant, Joseph McCurry, who circulated the petition and in all probability forged signatures when necessary. Now, taking all of this into consideration, Dubois concludes, 
the reader must bear in mind that these allegations are hypothetical, even though they have basis in reason.